Elon Musk just announced an audacious plan to send humans to Mars using a rocket with 42 engines in its first stage. It really brings to mind the Soviet N1 rocket that only had a mere 30 engines in its first stage. And that's what we're going to be talking about today on Vintage Space. The Soviet N-1 rocket is famous, or perhaps infamous, for failing to get the Soviet Union to the moon in the 1960s. But before we get into the nitty gritty of the rocket's failures, let's talk a little bit about where the rocket came from. The N-1 was never actually intended to go to the moon. It was originally designed as an interplanetary rocket to send manned missions to Mars and Venus. Now these missions weren't going to be landers, they were just going to be flyby missions. So the N-1 rocket was big enough to launch a payload that wasn't going to land on either of a planetary neighbors. But then in 1964, the Soviet Union decided to answer the American challenge of landing a man on the moon. Now, instead of starting completely from scratch, it decided to take some pieces of things that already existed and put them towards the now new lunar program. And that included the N1 rocket. The problem was, even though the moon is closer than either Mars or Venus, the N1 wasn't powerful enough to land a spacecraft big enough to include a landing vehicle. The Saturn V, as a point of comparison, was designed specifically specifically for Apollo's architecture that we know, that lunar orbit rendezvous mission, and it could take 130 US tons into low Earth orbit. The N1 could only take 75 US tons into low Earth orbit. So even though the two vehicles are different, you can see the discrepancy between the lift capability of these two vehicles. Now, the Soviet Union had two options to get a vehicle that could land on the moon into low Earth orbit and eventually to the moon. It could either develop a rocket that was more powerful, or it could add power by adding more engines. Now, it did a little bit from column A and a little bit from column B and some other things to take this Mars slash Venus rocket and send it towards the moon. But the end result that we need to worry about for the purposes of this video is that the final N1 rocket had 30 engines in its first stage. By comparison, the Saturn V had five. The N1 worked a little bit differently than Western rockets were used to from the same era, specifically when it comes to control in pitch, yaw, and roll, the three degrees of freedom that a rocket has to move around to go into orbit. Rather than using a complicated and heavy steering system involving gimbling the rocket nozzles in that first stage, the N1 gained pitch and yaw control by differential thrust. That meant that by varying the thrust, if rockets on one side gave out slightly less power than the other, the rocket would tilt and then fly in that direction. For roll control, six small nozzles on the outside of the rings of engines could swivel to steer the stack in a rolling motion. And the whole cluster of 30 engines was controlled by a system called CORD. And CORD is the reason why the N1 failed. The first N1 launch was on February 21st of 1969, and it's worth noting that the first stage had never been fully tested on the ground. This was effectively all-up testing of a massive rocket with 30 engines in its first stage. Everything looked fine during countdown, but then right before launch, engine number 12 shut down as of its opposite, engine number 24. Now, losing two engines in a cluster of 30 shouldn't be too much of a problem, the others could fire longer to compensate, but there were more problems with engine number 12. Engine number 12 was apparently quite sensitive to vibrations, which caused a part of its mechanisms to rupture. A pipe in the gas generator was punctured, and that sent searing hot gas into the propellant, which caused a fire. A rise in temperature was recorded in engines 3, 21, 22, 23, and 24, before CORD decided to shut down all the engines. The rocket lost thrust and crashed. The second launch of the N1 was on July 5th of 1969. A little more than half a second after launch, CORD shut down engines 7, 8, 19, and 20. At T plus 8.7 seconds, it shut down numbers 21 and 9. 10.15 seconds after launch, every engine had been mysteriously shut down except for number 18. The rocket stack rose about 200 meters off the ground, and then that one firing engine sent it flying back onto the launch pad pretty much broadside. Nobody was killed, luckily, but the launch pad was completely destroyed. The problem was eventually traced back to an oxygen sensor problem, but why that oxygen sensor problem should cause the engine control system to shut down the entire rocket stack was a bit of a mystery. The third N1 launch was on June 27th of 1971, and this one actually got off the launch pad and looked like it was going to be okay, except that it ran into roll stability problems. Now, this somehow translated into a command to CORD to shut down all of the rocket engines, and the rocket smashed into the ground. 
the fourth N1 launch was on November 23rd of 1972, and this one looked very briefly like it was going to actually go into orbit. At T plus 77 seconds, it had gone further than any of its predecessors, and Cord actually shut down the core cluster of six engines on time. But then, somehow, there was a fire in the bottom of the first stage, and the rocket exploded, and then it crashed into the ground. So, four N1 failures, three of which are rooted in the cord system specifically designed to manage the operation of that cluster of 30 engines. There were erroneous early shutdown signals, and also the problem that cord wasn't actually designed to withstand the stresses of launch or the acoustics dealt with in a launch. So tying this back to SpaceX and Musk's decision to use 42 engines in the first stage. Now, hopefully SpaceX isn't going to be using an antiquated Soviet-era engine control system, but there is the parallel that when you have 30 engines and 30 places for things to go wrong, you have a lot of explosions. So 42 engines and 42 places for things to go wrong means more explosions. Now there's something to be said for the redundancy of that many engines. You could lose one or maybe four, I'm not totally sure, I'm not a rocket scientist, but the remaining engines could fire longer to compensate. We've seen rockets lose engines before and be fine, namely Apollo 6 lost an engine and got into orbit. Not the best orbit that it wanted, but it got into orbit and completed its mission. Also, SpaceX is not Soviet-era rocketry, so hopefully they've got some massive secrets to controlling 42 engines that the Soviets just sadly did not have to get the N1 off the ground. So this is part one of what I think is going to be a three-part little mini-series of vintage things Musk's new plan for Mars is making me think of, because I think some of you guys are probably on my wavelength. This rocket is maybe making you think of Nova, and also the mission might be making you think of Von Braun's 1940s plan for Mars from Decimal's project. If you're thinking along those lines, let me know in the comments. And if it's bringing up any other vintage inspirations, also let me know in the comments. And if you've got more questions about the N1 or about Musk's new plan, leave those questions in the comments. And the story of the N1 is, of course, longer than I can possibly tell in a quick little video. And you guys guessed it, there is a blog post over at Popular Science with more details on where the N1 came from, how it was developed into this rocket with 30 engines in its first stage, and a little bit more details on why those launches failed. So again, all the comments and questions, leave those in the comments section below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram for daily vintage space content. And with new videos going up right here every single week, be sure to subscribe.